for taking the time to meet with me, Rusty. Please tell us your full name, uh, a little bit about the position you currently hold and how you ended up in it. Okay. Uh, my name is Rusty Kennedy. I'm the Executive Director of the Orange County Human Relations Commission. And I've been here for 35 years, uh, essentially holding up uh, the responsibility for the County of Orange in promoting and advocating civil rights. So I think I came through my parents' involvement and engagement in the civil rights movement in the 60s, which in Orange County was uh, much of it revolved around fair housing issues. Uh, in those days, people felt it was legitimate to not sell a house to somebody based on the color of their skin. So uh, my parents didn't see it that way. And they and their friends and people they put together uh, and their children uh, got involved in that fair housing and civil rights movement and later with Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers. And <clears throat> when I worked uh, for the union later as a young adult um, organizing the boycotts, I learned organizing, community organizing skills and became a community organizer. And the uh, Orange County Human Relations Commission in the, in the mid-70s was looking for somebody with community organizing skills and uh, I applied. And that's, you know, that's where I got hired and uh, worked here in a lot of different ways. Uh, I've been the executive director since 1981, so about 30 years, and wow. founded a nonprofit corporation here about 20 years ago. And now the nonprofit operates as a vendor to the county, so we provide services, including staffing their Human Relations Commission, creating school inter-ethnic relations and violence prevention programs, uh, doing mediation and conciliation, as well as helping hate crime victims um, uh, and doing what we call community building, which is uh, working to empower people to have a, a effective voice in the institutions that, that uh, affect their lives. It's kind of our charge the way I see it. Uh, some of them, you know, the way I come up from my family background to take interest in this and uh, and essentially my life's work now as a, you know, as a uh, old guy that I am. Please tell us where you were born and a little bit about your family of origin. Um, I was born in uh, Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. My uh, dad was uh, just getting out of the Navy and we lived in South Central Los Angeles around Normandy in a hundred and something. And moved into the house in North Orange County with the benefit of the GI Bill and the FHA, uh, you know, Federal Home Loan Administration uh, interest rate subsidies, I guess, in those days. Uh, bought into a white middle class suburban community of North Central Fullerton. And <coughs> my family, you know, my mom and dad were very involved in the church. My dad, you know, was an engineer with uh, North American Rockwell, uh, uh, designed the guidance and navigation systems, or led the team, was chief of guidance and navigation on the Apollo uh, spacecrafts. And uh, my mom, I was a stay-at-home mom, took care of neighborhood kids to get by at the beginning, and in later years, when my dad left his job uh, on leave in order to do something that was more socially redeeming um, in his 50s, um, he went back, got a PhD in, in uh, uh, urban planning and headed down the road toward uh, being a low-cost housing advocate. And at that time my mom went back to work as a teacher and worked another 20 years as a teacher. That's kind of my background in terms of my family. I have, you know, half dozen siblings and... Um, Do they all live here in Southern California? None of them. Oh, one of them now. That's right. Since my parents passed, uh, my oldest sister, who's an artist, a painter, in fact, that's one of her pieces up there. Uh, Which one, the top or bottom? The top one. And uh, that top picture there is, uh, you may have heard uh, the story of the uh, New York Times, uh, the New York Times reporter who was murdered by terrorists in Pakistan. Pearl. Pearl. Daniel, Daniel Pearl. Pearl. That's he actually went to high school with my brother-in-law. No kidding. Well, that's, that's my sister who didn't know Daniel Pearl, but upon uh, Daniel Pearl's uh, death, she was inspired by the fact that his Bolivian wife was pregnant, and, and, uh, and he, she imagined this picture of them dancing. And so later when I uh, met and worked with uh, Judea uh, Pearl and uh, Daniel's parents, 
Um, I, I gave them a copy of her of her painting. Uh, it's a, just a tribute to Daniel and the great work. They so my sister's the painter, and she lives down here. She took over um, my dad uh, with a lot of community people and myself, helped start a community newspaper uh, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, and <coughs> it's still running um, since What's he died. What's its name? The Fullerton Observer. Great. And uh, she operates that uh, newspaper, and uh, the rest of my siblings are up north uh, in California. Uh, one of them actually up in uh, Idaho. What, if any, religion were you raised in? First in the Presbyterian Church. I grew up in uh, attended Sunday school religiously. Uh, in fact, it was Presbyterian uh, interracial committee and the uh, Presbyterian uh, social action committee and, and the various different uh, committees on church and society that were the first vehicle for my parents' activism and, and my engagement in the civil rights movement in the 60s when I was just a, a kid. And uh, later uh, we got more involved in a congregational church. Later my dad started a fellowship group with Christians and Jews and Catholics and you know a variety of others around called Shalom Ecumenical Fellowship. Does it uh, still exist? Nope. nope. Uh, and, uh, and I think my, my mom got more engaged after my dad died in the Unitarian Church, uh, which was the last, so I've kind of done, done the tour. Please tell us about your post-secondary education. I have a bachelor's degree from the University of Redlands Johnston College. In? Sociology. Any graduate degree? No graduate degrees. Lots of training things. So I went to Instituto Phoenix to learn Spanish in Cuernavaca, Mexico. And I have uh, management institutes and leadership uh, programs from a variety of different groups, the county, the Fieldstone Foundation, Coral, various things that I've participated in through the years. Can you please tell us what the mission of the Orange County Human Relations Council is? Yeah, our nonprofit uh, organization was created to eliminate prejudice, intolerance, and discrimination and uh, create a community where all people feel valued and included. We do that through a variety of programs. Please uh, briefly tell us what those are. We have a lot of our work is about conflict resolution and figuring out how to teach people and assist people in resolving conflict, with a, a, a focus because of the community we're in, Orange County, one of the most diverse places in the in the country right now. Interestingly, um, focusing on intercultural or specializing with intercultural and multilingual mediation. But, uh, so we do a lot of mediation, conflict resolution, everything from you know, mediating between um, the diverse elements of the Vietnamese American community when 10,000 are demonstrating in the streets against uh, the, the little shopkeeper that put up a picture of Ho Chi Minh uh, about you know, how can we do this in a way that won't violate the rights of everybody else. You can have your protest. And so bringing together the police and some of those leaders in big, you know, community conflict resolution, multi-party, elaborate, and high stakes to uh, trash cans. And uh, your trash cans uh, are in my yard. Your dog is barking at night. Your leaves are falling in my pool. Uh, tenant, landlord, consumer, merchant, lots of that. So mediation. And then we also have a, a you know, our 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 school programs. We call our bridges, our school interethnic relations and violence prevention program, or intergroup relations. Now that's an effort to bring diverse group kids together and uh, really train them to be the leaders and activists of tomorrow that will lead our community and its diverse elements uh, in a unified way, tolerant and respectful of people who believe differently and look differently. Does that, does that include transgenders? Yes, yes. It's a, we, we deal with uh, the LGBT community, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender uh, uh, community, as well as uh, race, religion, ethnicity, sexual orientation, all the other aspects of diversity um, are equal with regards to the, uh, it just depends on the, the eye of the beholder as to what people pick on for a purpose for discriminating against someone. Uh, we're teaching people to, to be accepting and, and respectful of others who are different. Speaking specifically about the Bridges program, how many schools are you in right now? This year we have contracts with 20. 
So there are 20 Describe schools. a contract with that. Well, it, that means there are 20 schools where we're working year long or multiple years, and I have a staff person that goes there every week, and we do a whole variety of different projects and, and engagements with them. We have probably three times that many schools that we work with in some capacity in the course of the year at our Walk in My Shoes Symposium, at our summer leadership camps, in our youth internship program called Orange County Youth Organizers, variety of capacities. Are there similar programs to Bridges elsewhere other than Orange County? You know, there are other providers that do elements of this kind of work. Um, the Anti-Defamation League's World of Difference is a program that trains teachers with some of the same core materials. The uh, former National Conference of Christians and Jews, now called California Coalition for Equality and Justice, uh, provides some of these kinds of programs in the, in the uh, Long Beach, Los Angeles area, as well as there are some other organizations like that. Uh, not not in your town. Uh, Spinoff from the ADL is a program that does some elements of this. It, we have a, probably a, a slightly different approach. Uh, ours is an organizational development, community organizing, leadership development approach, which is different than many that tend to either sell a curriculum or uh, have a teacher training program as opposed to uh, organizing an element on campus. Which President's White House Conference on of on hate crime. Were you participating in? Oh, uh, President Bill Clinton uh, convened a, a national conference of people that were involved in in uh, hate crime response and prevention of hate crime, and um, I was invited as a delegate to that. So there were a couple hundred of us invited from throughout the United States. And we got to go to the White House, one of the most exciting things uh, ever happened in my life, and uh, have breakfast with the president and, and, um, and the cabinet uh, there in the White House. And, uh, and then we proceeded through the day and a variety of different workshops with different cabinet members. The vice president was involved, the attorney general was involved. I got a chance to chat with the attorney general um, and the Department of Education director, uh, Riley, that was Janet Reno and, and uh, Frick Riley's first name, but uh, very interesting uh, experience. And uh, I, I got uh, an unusual opportunity, even in that setting, uh, to meet and greet the president uh, myself. And, and you know, all of a sudden there were just eight of us in the room, and and they locked the doors, and the president came in the side door, and, it's, and then talked with each one of us and the White House photographer took a picture. What came from that conference? Did anything concrete that you can point to come from it? Well, the president uh, uh, brought about a, a national um, initiative and he used his, his, uh, um, the um, U.S. attorneys in the different regions and he, he directed them to convene hate crime networks essentially like we had already done here. He essentially was copying this model that Orange County, LA, there are a couple places where they had done similar kinds of things. So we had engaged our U.S. Attorney, Michael Janaco at the time, and various community victim groups and law enforcement groups and brought them together around our shared concern for uh, white supremacist violence and, uh, and hate crime against all people. And so uh, that initiative resulted in that model being spread across the nation, and uh, that was one of the outcomes. Also, there were, you know, our program ended up getting identified by the U.S. Department of Justice and U.S. Department of Education.